Who's that? Who could that be? I do believe that is moi. Me. Yours. How exciting! I was asked by the Spectrum Noir guys if I would help them develop these discovery boxes. And in doing so, we have together developed this amazing discovery box for those who have wanted to try the Spectrum Noir watercolour markers but just haven't quite been brave enough to do it. They are for everybody. So in the kit you get an art liner which I have chosen the 0.3 because it's actually a really lovely medium sized nib. You get six watercolour papers, you get the booklet and you get five of the brushes which I personally have chosen these colours for you guys to get the maximum out of it as possible. As you can see on the front there is my little frog dude. This is the original one I did for the cover and this is what I'm going to show you how to do in today's video but before we do that I just want to unbox it for you. So even those that are not sketchers that want to learn how to or maybe just a bit intimidated by the idea we work together to produce line work for you so you don't have to do the hard work it is there and then you can just practice and see how you get on once you build confidence with the product then you can go on and maybe draw some of your own when your pack arrives so you get the line work as well as the pens as we've mentioned you also get a how-to book and this is a bit of information it's got loads and loads of really good advice and tips and made a color chart up for you which shows how you can mix the colors and the type of color that you will expect to see from that which will show you that actually if you take your basic colors you can really make some nice colors from it so you can either take a ceramic pot or a bit of acetate but i'll talk you through that when we go through the tutorial and there's lots of other different methods that you can do and just have a play but again this was one i did with the markers um quite a few years ago now and yeah they are just really really versatile so there's a lot of useful information on there for you to have a look through this will be part one of a series of three videos if you want to see the other two tutorials it will not have this information at the beginning i will only do this on this video um so the other two tutorials again will be a bird of paradise and a hummingbird with some flowers so these are the three that we're going to be doing but today as we're looking at the cover we're going to be doing this to frog so the first thing we're going to do is start off with our green which is our alpine green and we're just going to fill some of the spaces at the back of the frog and the top of the head all you want to do is apply a bit of color to the main areas that we want the color to be strongest then we will use our water to bring the colour out into the other areas. That way it's easier and quicker to actually build up depth because you are reducing the opacity of the colour the more it's watered down. So as we sort of spread out from our darkest zone, we actually naturally create some light areas. You'll find that because of these pens are so pigmented that actually the colour goes quite a long way. So you can use some of the colour that's still wet off the page onto your brush and continue using. Use the Kingfisher to apply this to his belly. You don't have to stick to these rules of course, you can be any colour you want within the pack that you have, but I used Kingfisher on his belly because he had quite a nice little cool tummy and uh, I thought I'd try and stick to as much of his natural colour as possible, but I also wanted to show you how versatile these colours are when trying to mix and you'll see later on in the tutorial what I mean by that. If you keep your brushes fairly wet but don't oversaturate them because you can then flood the paper. If that does, does happen to you don't panic just get a bit of kitchen roll and just sup up some of the water and then you can just colour over the top of it again. We are using the Prussian Blue now and that is to start giving us different colours and a bit of shadow, a bit of shading, 
and yeah this is how really we're going to start adding shading on a lot of our areas you'll see that mixing crush and blue with quite a lot of the colors is a really really good way of giving you some nice depth Any colour that you have on the brush is really worth using up because it can just give you a bit of a base colour for other parts of your drawing so don't forget that uh, no colour is wasted. If you don't feel confident enough about going straight onto the paper with your pens grab yourself a china plate, a bit of plastic, an old paint palette, as long as it's plastic you can apply some colour onto the plastic and then you can take the colour off from your with your brush and then you can go directly onto the paper. That way it takes away that panic of you having to go directly onto your paper with your pen. At this point I decided that I wanted the edges to be a little bit softer so I just went around with a wet brush to just try and give it a bit more of a softer edge to it. As you can see I'm drawing some of the colour out from his leg up to the underneath of his chin and it's all these little techniques that you can use to be able to give your colour some consistency across your whole portrait and just to soften some areas up. To create the eyes we are going to go down with some sunshine and some scarlet and the combination of the two gives you a really beautiful vibrant orange which is very common in these types of frogs. So you want to really use the scarlet on the inner part where the eye is generally darker and then you just the mainly the yellow on the outer part and again if you feel like you need to add any pigment to it just top, a, top it up a little bit with a little dab on top and then you can spread that colour around. We're also spreading it down to his toes and I was using just a bit of leftover colour there that was left on my brush. As I say, no colour is wasted and we're just going to add a little bit each. You can just see I literally did one stroke on each foot and that is enough colour to spread that around and give me the colour that I need for each section without then actually using too much which is another reason why these products are amazing because there is no wastage. Anything you've got left on your brush just tap on the edge of one of your pens and that way you get a nice little flicker, splatter, whatever you want to call it, effect uh, which actually works really really well on these types of watercolours. It adds a little bit of freedom of expression which just makes them a bit more fun. I'm just cleaning a little bit of the orange there that where the leg was still a little bit too wet it had started to feather out. Don't panic if this happens to you, just get a clean brush and remove that colour. As long as your brush is clean you can pretty much repair, unless it's really horrific, uh, quite a few mistakes that can happen in watercolour. You pretty much have the basics down so we're just going to start adding a bit more depth to him now. So we're going back in with the Prussian blue and this is just little bits in the areas that we know that we need the shadow and again we just do a couple of strokes here and there and then we use our water to blend that ink out and then using this from our brush we can then start to create a lot more shadow, a lot more depth and give him a bit more realness, a bit of 3D and uh, yeah just start piecing him together. We will a bit later make that little leg area a bit darker but for now just if you do it in this order you are guaranteed not to go wrong but trust me I am an artist. If you do have a go I would love to see your results please don't forget to tag me across all of my social media I am at Bonita Doodles on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok and so yeah come and find me and tag me I would love to see what it is that you come up with even if you don't use these colours you maybe try something different I'm excited to see what you guys can produce from this box that yeah we made. It's just been a fantastic journey and I'm so happy and proud to be part of something so amazing because this then means that this is accessible for so many more people that may not have had the confidence to have a go in this type of thing. 
I don't know if you just saw there, but I put a bit of ink on my desk because my desk is waterproof and uh, just literally picked it up off my brush and created some little splatter effects. And again, it gives them a bit of movement and a bit of depth. I have just put down Alpine Green and Prussian Blue together and this gives you this beautiful dark green, almost like a racing, it's just such a nice green. Again, have a play with the different combinations of colours that you can do. I'll pop the information card up again here of the extensive range of colours that I got just from the ones in your box. We're now going to start building up the pigment and making him a lot more richer in the shadow areas and to do that you really need to allow your work to have some time to dry. Once it's dry you are able to get down a lot more colour so give it a chance to just dry, pop some more of the dark colours that you need to apply to get those shadows deeper and then you'll find that he'll eventually become a lot more 3D. So just a bit of patience here is needed. You can use a hair dryer. If you use it close up, please make sure it is on a cold setting. But you can use a hair dryer if you want to speed the process up. Just be careful because if your water is saturating your water, if your paper is saturated, you will blow your water everywhere. So make sure that it's not drowning in water and just so you're sensible really. So just be careful if you are going to use a hair dryer to allow it to dry a bit quicker. Where I've managed to use the two colours again, the Prussian blue and the Alpine green, we've created a much darker area underneath his leg and we've just drawn that up with our brush from where we were. And this is where the fine nibs come into their own because when we want to get tiny little details in there, that's exactly what we can do with our fine tips. We can add some dots for little inf uh, little interest. We can build shadow actually from using dots and it's another way of being able to line certain areas and just give it a bit more crispness sometimes if you need that. Sometimes if information gets lost, you just want to accentuate that. So that's essentially what we're going to do with the fine point. You may find you don't use it as often, but it still has a very good use. So start to refine the shape of your frog and just get the detail in that you are happy with. And yeah, just keep going until we've built up enough colour that he then becomes 3D. With the inner eye, the black of the eye, again, we are going to be using the Alpine Green and the Prussian Blue together. This way it gives us a nice depth without actually having to go to black. If you want to add a highlight anywhere, just put a tiny drop of water in the area that maybe you want to add a little highlight. In this instance, I've popped it on the eye. You can either drop a little drop of water and let it sit there for 30 seconds a minute and then just take the water away and it will give you quite a perfect circle actually. Otherwise, you can just rest a clean, wet brush on the area and it will suck out the pigment from your paper which gives you quite a nice natural highlight. The advantage to this, if you don't like how it turns out, you can actually then just paint over it and start again. If you see here, I drew out a little bit too much of the colour, so I've just gone in again with the finer point and just gone over the colour where I want to add the colour back in and uh, yeah, no love lost, it's all great and we've learnt something on how to repair a mistake. 
adding again some more of the scarlet to give us a bit more oomph and shadow on the bottom of his eye again helping to create shape so don't be afraid to just build up slowly add a little bit here and there and the more you use these tools the more confident you will become in using them and i guarantee you will have so much fun they really really are so much fun to use and i can't wait to see what you guys come up with At this point it's up to you how much colour you want to get down. Again it's just a case of having a bit of confidence with it and seeing how far you want to go. It's probably best, I probably should have said this at the beginning, but it's probably best if you are unsure just to get a scrap bit of watercolour paper. I cannot tell you the importance of using watercolour paper. So the paper that it comes with is a really really good quality paper and you'll, you'll see that when you use them to use these pens and maybe if you've just tried using cheaper stuff in the past and it hasn't worked very well, I guarantee you it's because of the quality of the paper. It is really, really important when it comes to watercolour because it allows for the spread of pigment across the paper and using the wrong tools for something you want to achieve can be really off-putting and make it feel like it's something you're doing wrong but actually it's not it's generally the tools so just bear that in mind if going forward you are going to carry on and maybe practice a bit more with these pens that ideally you need to be looking at some really good quality paper the spectrum noir watercolor paper is actually the one i use all the time and it's 300 gsm so it's a really really good weight and it's white so it's a really really lovely color and i like using white because it makes scanning process so much easier so how have you enjoyed it so far let me know in the comments have you had a go i would love to know if you've had a go as i say don't forget take a snapshot come and grab me on social media and uh, give me a shout and i shall have a look ski and uh, if you are on instagram if you tag me on instagram i'll share it in the stories because yeah i just can't wait to see what you guys come up with i'm really 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 <laughs> can you tell really really excited From here on in it pretty much is tweaking and making sure that everything's how you want it to be. I tend to be tweaking quite a lot actually because as things dry they tend to dry lighter which means that sometimes you want to add a bit more colour or a bit more depth. So essentially that's what I end up doing to finish this piece off. Now depending on how much you've done so far or how happy you are with what you have done so far you may be completely um, finished you may be happy with how you've done or maybe you just want to come back to it another day entirely up to you and there's not much left so have a good morning afternoon evening whichever it may be guys and I shall see you in the next video bye